Well, hello YouTube. My name is Daniel Gallette. Welcome to my outdoors channel. Right now I'm at 290 subscribers. I'd like to say thank you to each one of you. I enjoy answering comments, questions, and if you are new to the channel or you are lurking and haven't subscribed yet, I ask you to please subscribe. There will be more content coming like this. <clears throat> I got a fish on. You do? Yeah. Alright, today I would like to talk to you about going to a place you've never been to before and looking for spots to fish there. Um, we're going to go over looking at the weather and the tides and then also in Google Earth how to look at historical images to see what the shoreline looks like or the bottom looks like if the current aerial image um, is not very good quality. Um, I know there's going to be a lot of information that I'm going to go over so if you could ask some questions but I'm going to try keeping this quick and briefly and how to access this information and below I'll leave links in the description. Okay the first website here is part of the Texas A&M AM Corpus Christi, uh, the Texas Coastal Observation Network, Tikkun. Um, I have pulled up the Baffin Bay location on Point of Rocks. I grabbed three things from here. First is the primary water level. When it's below like 13.5, rocks in Baffin are a little bit more exposed, so I use more caution. And then the next thing, I check water temperature. So water temperature to me, you know, this is like early morning here. Um, it'll get hotter during the day, but like when it's below like 60 degrees, um, you know, it's more like winter trend um, in the 70s, you know, more in the spring and spawn and so on. And then the last thing I check that's available on here is barometric pressure. And then you can go lower down here and you can see how the air temperature, water temperature, wind speed, and look, the barometer. So you can see the, if the barometer is rising or falling or steady. You can see here, it's been pretty steady around 30, maybe 30 point, oh, it would drop down below 29 to the 20s. But, um, you know, below 30.4 is like fair, but if you can drop down below 30, it's much, much better for fishing. Um, like the heavy hand of pressure keeps holding the fish down and when the pressure is lower, like literally the hand is lifted off them. The next website, the National Weather Service, Let's look at Monday, for example, tomorrow. An east wind, 5 to 10 knots, increasing to 15 in the afternoon. A light chop, moderate in the afternoon. Okay, so this information is very helpful for me to determine whether my small boat can get that far out or not, or if I'm just going to go to a more uh, smaller local bay that's more protected. Okay, the next website here on the National Weather Service, forecast.weather.gov. Um, on the map we can move it around and we can click on different spots and I click on the land near the mouth of Affin um, it refreshes weather in that area all very helpful information so tomorrow likely showers and thunders before 1 p.m. so could be good or there could be lightning and then it'll pull up the wind gust information so tomorrow Wind gust, wind direction from the northeast swapping to east in the afternoon. Okay, so that's the last of the weather those websites. All right, here's a spot on the south shore of Baffin Bay. Um, this current map looks like garbage to me, but you can see it's like sandy and then it's grassy here and who knows what's out over here. So let's go to the historical imagery. All right, that's 1995. Let's go to the previous. Look at that magic. So now we can see the scattered potholes. There's a gut right here, and then another bar right there. Very cool. So this all looks very weightable. I'm not gonna dictate, you know, exactly when or where to go wade there, but if you get a south wind behind you, this would be a good spot with a little bit calmer water. Okay. So here's another example, like in Arandis Bay, off from Lydia Ann Channel, Trailer, and Trolley Island. Um, you can see, if you had like a north wind, for example, it would be a little bit more protected on this side. You have a cut, so there's tidal movement, fish moving in and out of here, feeding. 
and you can zigzag weeding these potholes here and even on this edge of this channel. Um, and if you look at the historical, you can see different times of year, you know, when the water's lower and it's a little bit muddied up. You want to just look at different years to get a better idea what the bottom looks like. All right, some apps I use on my phone here, the boating app from Navionics. Earlier we looked at a shoreline between like this trailer and trolley island here and you can see I have this really weird looking color map. If we go to the original layers, so we can see here six feet of water, ten feet of water off, ten feet of water, six, and then maybe two, three feet of water. So in Navionics you can take the sonar chart and and I have set the different depths from the sonar different colors so orange is one foot dark purple two light purple three and then four is the teal and then the darker blue is five and then six plus and these dark lighter shades of blue so right here this would be a good spot you're close to this little these little guts right here where the channel is over here you get these little coves so it does look rather weightable and over here you get a larger flat where the grasses are okay again similarly here you can see a similar show or line I showed earlier on Google Earth on my computer um, here's the earth image and then if I go to the sonar chart overlay we can see the orange one foot, two foot, three, four. We can see the different depths of water and it looks very weightable, this shoreline and all the, the structure. If I turn off the sonar, you can see all this grass through here is weightable in two to three feet of water. Okay, the next app, just real generically, we're gonna go to, let's say, South Bird Island. And let's say next uh, week in June. Let's go this next Saturday. Weekend Warrior. You can see here we're at 100% full moon and the minor period coincides with the sunrise. So sunrise is at 6.30. So that's a really good time to be fishing actually when the overhead or setting or rising. Um, anyway, you'd want to be there a little bit before this minor period and after the, the minor period. And then also it shows the major periods. All right. All right, the last app here, Google Earth. It is very helpful to look at an alternative aerial map than other maps that are already installed on your phone. All right, well, I hope this information is helpful to you. I think these advanced Google Earth uh, lesson that I showed you all today looking at historical images um, you know I've used it to unveil little structures and you know like where rocks are in Baffin so I know where to to safely run my boat and um, you know to kind of focus on rocks as well or I found uh, bars in, in, in mid bay and otherwise if you look at this year's aerial image it, it looks like garbage you need to go to the previous years or 20 years ago or even 1990s and, um, certain areas there's aerial images that were taken back in the 50s if you want to look so um, using these things can help you anticipate what the water depth is like in the navionics with the sonar data and then uh, other maps like um, like the hook and line hook and line will give you information like what time of year where you know roughly where to wade whether it's wadeable or not and um, <clears throat> the time of year to go to these places and um, I hope this information can help you so you go to these new spots the first time and like catch fish there the first time you go there Reel it up, reel it up buddy big I big can't! Reel it up, here, here, it's a big hard hit Yeah, yeah real, real. come it, over here towards the edge You gotta, you gotta get Whoa! Oh my god <laughs> It's biggest hard head I've ever seen.
Yeah, gaff top, yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Is that what a gaff top is? <laughs>